join me in welcoming Pat Tobin. Thank you everyone for coming. I apologize, I'm fighting a cold this week. Uh, I'm not infectious anymore. Um, so uh, bear with me, hopefully I won't have a coughing day and embarrass myself. Um, wouldn't you know that we'd be talking about cyber and cyber insurance and cyber related uh, threats, and then we have a technical difficulty. So, uh, it's resolved. It is resolved. I uh, brought a technical expert with me today, uh, Phil Adderton with CTH, and he's going to uh, get into the data internal control measure. So if we have anything too technical, as far as your questions are concerned, I'm going to talk to this guy. And, and I'm going to defer to the guy in the back of the room, my partner. He's really technical. Okay. So we're going to talk about um, the exposures, which you're all too familiar with, so we won't spend a lot of time on that. But certainly those exposures have a monetary value, and certainly you have choices where those exposures are concerned. And those choices are, well, you can ignore it, pretend that it's not there, but you're not going to get away with that for long, right? Or you can self-insure it, certainly, but that's going to have related costs involved, right? And the related costs, we don't know how high that could go. Now, you can also self-insure by way of a deductible, right? So you can transfer your exposure, and you can transfer that exposure to data capability, the internal controls of your systems, procedures, as well as transfer the exposure by way of insurance, okay? Now, if you transfer your exposure by way of insurance, then you can also self-insure by having a higher deductible. So um, if for no other reason, you definitely want to take into account your exposure to something that's catastrophic. <coughs> We're not trying to make people insurance poor, but you want to be able to manage the risk. So we're going to talk about that. Um, risk mitigation we talked about and the cyber risk policy itself. Now, when we talk about cyber, um, cyber is more than the actual data, right? If you've got a, a computer, you've got an exposure, but you've got an exposure on several different levels. You have the actual physical damage exposure. Um, somebody drops <coughs> it, walks off with it. There's a fire. So you've got the physical damage aspect. You've also got the data itself that is actually in the mechanism. And what's going to happen to that if it gets into the wrong hands? You've also got a professional liability exposure, right? Because of privacy laws, because of HIPAA regulations, data that gets into the wrong hands creates liability. And your standard liability coverage is not going to protect you. Okay? So just out of curiosity, not to put anyone on the spot or embarrass anyone, raise your hands, those who think that they have their cyber exposures insured in some manner. Okay, that's a pretty good showing. Statistics tell us that only 19% of business actually have adequate cyber insurance protection. Only 19%. So you may think that you have something that may have various levels of support, right? So got a computer, you've got risk. Since 2008, over 500 million data records have been compromised. Now, I don't know who gathers all of that information and counts it all, but um, 500 million sounds like a lot. Since 2004, 1,700 breaches have resulted in <coughs> over a billion dollars of data records that have been compromised, all times. That's a lot of money. And we haven't even really touched the iceberg yet. The courts have not been truly tested yet because we don't even have a lot of laws that are even on the books. All of us probably recall one of the biggest breach stories was TJ Maxx. I didn't realize that over 100 million records were compromised in that breach. That is an awful lot. And 
just managing that and recovering from that, not to mention all of the consequential business from that. You know, it's not just the actual loss of data or the expenses involved. There's the reputation aspect that's involved, too. You know, how do you get your name back? How do you assure the public that you're safe again? How do you get people want to come in the door again? So we can relate that to community banks as well. How safe is the bank? The public has a perception that every bank is safe. If there's a breach, makes the local newspaper, you know, the, the talk of the town. And you don't want to be the talk of the town in a negative way. Okay, only if security is in your backyard, aren't they? So any bank is going to have to deal with the regulatory aspect where extortion is concerned, where cyber threats are concerned, where the data threats are concerned. So your risk, we obviously said, are financial, they're reputational, and you have the regulatory, and if you have the regulatory, well then what does that turn into? Legal. 47 states have notice requirements, of which Illinois is one. So you have a breach, you're required to notify the customer of potential risk. Okay, even with proper internal controls, we can all still have the exposure, right? Okay, costs associated with the consequences of a breach. You're coping with the breach itself. You're trying to minimize your lawsuit potential. You're resolving a lawsuit if one comes out, and you've got your costs and risk exposures for the bank. <coughs> okay, coping with recovering from the breach. That recovery can include having to hire a risk management consultant to come in and shore up what's missing. Right, Phil? Right. Um, you may have to have all the forensics done, tested, uh, have your legal team on board, where, and then where do we go from here? Okay, minimizing your lawsuit potential, your notification, provide credit report monitoring services for one year is mandatory in Illinois, engaging a public relationship expert and possibly having to create a call center. Okay, what are your potentials from third party claimants? Keep in mind, if you take every measure of protection by way of your equipment and the third-party service providers that you invite to service your hardware, software, their actions may also result in a liability for the bank. Sorry, Phil. But if the firewalls don't hold, for example, then your company is not going to have enough professional liability insurance. Okay, So if they blow through their limit of liability on their professional, what are you going to do? You think that you've got to hold harmless cause? You think that you're going to be made whole? And I'm sure that's every service provider's intent. But if they have 5,000 customers and a firewall doesn't hold, there's not enough insurance. Okay. So, you need some protection at the bank level. Okay, what's going to step in for us, even though someone else is responsible? So there are ways that you can structure that and do that through your insurance professional. So, these claims can result in a failure to protect the information, a failure to protect the private health information, thus the HIPAA regulations, Failure to notify in a timely manner. What is a timely manner? Well, usually they say a prudent man standard. Well, what is a prudent man? We don't know. And you can't control how people sue you. So all it takes is an allegation to be made, right? And it has to be defended. So you want to make sure that your insurance program not only makes you whole in terms of what you've lost, but you need to make sure that it's going to defend you and not just pay your claim, okay? What's it going to cost? The latest survey results indicate $214 is the average 
direct cost per record after a breach. We have a client that has 27,274 deposit accounts. If they have a breach and the average cost is $214 per record, what does that come to? Five point eight million, six million dollars. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we didn't have the CIF records for that bank, so we had to pull out the FDIC data. So it's an estimate, if you will, but it's the closest thing we can get without knowing the CIF records of the bank. And my guess is it's probably the most CIF records. Okay, most states, including Illinois, have the notification requirement. Many states, again, including Illinois, require you to notify the state attorney general of what fun it is. <laughs> now, some states um, have data privacy laws uh, with fines that are up to $250,000. Um, this is pending right now in Illinois, so who knows what these penalties could develop. Okay, let's envision some little boxes here, and we're going to look at your electronic exposures. Okay, your property casualty standpoint, you've got the physical damage. If I go over here and I accidentally spill my glass of water on the equipment, there's going to be some physical damage to the equipment. Okay, so physical damage to the equipment, data, media for covered perils. Let's just pick the obvious one, a fire. That's going to be part of your package, your business, personal property, or your contents. Okay? What if you have a generator or your backup? Is that building or is that contents? Well, I don't know. Depends on if it's permanently affixed or not. And where is it? Is it on the back parking lot? Or is it right next to your circuit panel? So those are some what if questions. And, it's, and the answer is going to be, well, it depends. It depends on where it is and what it's doing. OK. You've got electronic data processing coverage that may be a separate insuring agreement within your package. Or it may be a rider. And it's actually preferred to handle all of your electronics by way of a separate agreement or a separate writer. The danger of having it be part of contents is that you don't have enough limit, right? You've invested X number of dollars in all of your electronics, but what are you going to do about the furniture, fixtures, your improvements, and betterments? Okay. So selecting a limit of liability isn't always an exact science either. So go with your separate electronic protections within your package programs. Now, you've also got your general liability. Now, general liability is supposed to protect you from negligence. Now, if you're negligent and you cause bodily injury or property damage to another person or thing, your general liability is supposed to protect you for that. Well, the only trouble is there's absolute exclusions for anything electronic related under the commercial general liability policy. So don't think that you're protected for liability under your liability policy. And it's in the afternoon you're thinking, uh, what? <laughs> it's not exactly sinking in. Don't rely on the obvious sometimes. 